help, my boss is a bully. It's a pretty common conversation that I have these days and it, it horrifies me to be perfectly honest that we have this uh, situation where increasingly we hear about scenarios in the workplace where people are getting highly, highly stressed uh, because they're the victim of a bully, victim of a boss that uh, is making their life incredibly difficult. And literally, we I've had a, several candidates who I would normally never, ever speak to who have been on medical leave, stress leave, because of that situation. So, look, it, it's a really, really difficult um, scenario. In a couple of circumstances, I've seen people literally just, you know, decide not to tackle it and leave the business and go and find a new job, get out of that toxic environment. And that really was, in that case, the best strategy. But generally speaking, I, I really do, unless it's in that sort of high stress stakes scenario, I try and counsel people to work through those issues wherever possible in the workplace and to try and really work out why that person is acting that way and calling it out and holding your ground. And we find that if we can get uh, ourselves into a situation where over a short period of time we're holding our ground, we're calling the behaviour out, the behaviour tends to either minimise or, or completely disappear um, or the circumstances tend to change. So you know, a lot of careers, I believe, have probably been ruined because people have gone, this is too hard, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the, the, the business environment. You know, this person is just making my life hell. I've had probably two bosses over the years that were crossing over to bullying territory and I was able to navigate that situation. I, I didn't have a mentor at the time, but I kind of had an innate sense that I had to kind of crack the code on these individuals in terms of their communication code. Because if I literally just left, uh, you know, my career would have been derailed really, really early on and I would have missed out on some other great opportunities. So in those circumstances, I, I found that really clear communication was essential. Uh, documenting things that had been said in meetings was essential. And so I learned a technique to kind of follow meetings up with things in writing so that there was a clear audit trail, if you like, of what had transpired. And if the behaviour became so extreme, um, I would actually call it out and tell that individual that that behaviour was affecting me. And um, I would really prefer that we try and work out a different way to operate with each other. And sometimes that's involved a sort of a, a sidebar coffee chat uh, in some instances, the individual wasn't aware of the impact that it was having. Uh, in one instance, the individual thought they were doing the right thing and they thought that, that by pressuring me that uh, they were going to bring a better level of performance out in me. And in another circumstance, you know, the individual was in fact a bit of a psychotic individual um, and had more problems than probably I ever realised going on behind the scenes and, and that individual through circumstances ended up leaving the business. So I was able to wait him out and, uh, you know, he moved uh, sideways left and then eventually out of the business. So... Look, it, everyone's you know situation is going to be individualistic and, and you know based on your own personal circumstances. But as a business executive, as you go up through the ranks of businesses, you're going to encounter difficult personalities. You're going to encounter abrasive personalities, dominant personalities, people who uh, like to be the loudest in the room, people who like to show up in uh, the, the meetings as the superstar. Uh, and some of these people belittle other people or make other people feel small. Obviously, it's not great leadership traits, but they will you will encounter them. And so there's a level of reality about this. Learning how to deal with those personalities, in my experience, that the, the tricks I use are 
you know, just being very clear with communication, not rising to the bait, documenting things so that I have clear understanding of what the expectations are. I follow things up in writing so I can never be hung out to dry by an individual. And if it gets to an extreme sort of scenario, I will call that individual out and I'll always go to that individual one-on-one and try and resolve it with that individual. I have very rarely gone to HR to try and solve my problems. Uh, You know, these days, I think when you have a bullying situation, HR can sometimes make it worse. They will often throw kerosene on a situation and as soon as you make a formal complaint, it has to go through a formal process. And as soon as that individual's told you've made a complaint to HR about them and, uh, you know, that you've accused them of being a bully, that their back goes up even more and they will try and defend that claim and potentially your life could be made even worse. So my strategy has always been, first and foremost, to try and go to that individual and call them out on the behaviour in a non-emotional way and in my circumstance it has worked really well if it doesn't work and you are finding yourself getting stressed if you're finding yourself actually having to go off on medical stress leave and you've got yourself overwhelmed my advice is move on Uh, find a better better boss find a better environment life's too short Uh, don't try and stress yourself out don't try and you know go through litigation and all those kind of things they just they can derail your career they it can derail your life and it in many circumstances it can be a terrible waste of time and energy Um, but I would love to talk to you if you're experiencing a problem uh, in the workplace come and have a confidential chat to someone independent someone who maybe can see it through a different set of eyes and can give you some really good counsel very important to get good counsel when these situations are happening so that you're not getting a little bit can't see the wood for the trees can't see how serious the situation is or how minor the situation is you need that external perspective sometimes so we'd love to have a chat with you